Well, I think about four years ago, I found out Omotola is actually an activist. When she, more than four years now, when she set up OEP, oh, yeah, that's Omotola Youth Empowerment Program, and that there was this cover that Why Night I did for her, Omotola is angry, <laughs> you know, sitting down like that, you know what I mean? And then I didn't know you give back, because you've been giving back to widows for a number of years as well. You do all of these things, more or less, I mean, because you're in the media, you get support from the media, but can your, can your fans separate you, the actress, from you, the activist, and you, the philanthropist? I think now they can. Um, it's difficult for some of them. I understand that because I, um, of late, um, some clip was brought to my um, knowledge where you know I was talking and my elements and some of them were like, oh my god, you know. But that's the other part of me. You know, the other part of me is very vicious. <laughs> it's very, you know, and all of that. So when I'm in my activism mode, um, in beast mode, I'm not the, the entertainer and mm -hmm. the most sexy you know anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so those those are different parts of me, and I think as time goes on, people are beginning to know, to differentiate them and say, okay, she's in that space mm. now. Um, when I'm doing that, I really don't care for how I look, um, how you perceive me. I don't care. I don't even think about it. I just, it comes from my heart and I just let it go. Um, but of course, when I'm an actor <laughs> or when I'm doing almost sexy things, yeah, then the beauty and then the look and the poise and everything mm -hmm. comes into play. But uh, personally, I'm able to differentiate all of them. I'm comfortable with that. Because and there's Omoti. Omoti is a serious one. Yes, Omoti is a very activist. serious one. <laughs> there's Omo Sexy, as named by your husband. Yeah. And then there's Omotola. Yes, Omotola is the mother and the wife and the, the person you see without makeup at home, just running around in my sweats or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Omoti is? Omoti is pretty much my activism side and mostly the singer. Yeah, mostly the singer. Um, I say that because most of my singing is actually not about love or... You know, those kind of topics. I mean, it's not like I don't What's once bah? in a while. Bah, um, take, take it. No, what was the reason for the bah? That's your... You, uh, oh, okay. Um, it was just, it was actually in Nigeria. It was Nigeria, like, take it. Like, this is what I have, <laughs> you know, and everything. Mm -hmm. But I, ha I also have to say here that my first album was not a true, was not... 100% a true, yeah, representation of me. Why? Um, because, one, I wanted to do rock. I'm actually, when, when it comes to music, I'm more of a rock yeah. person. I'm more of a soft rock person. Um, I wasn't allowed to do that. Um, shout out to Obi Asika. He was my mentor for mm -hmm. my first album. And um, the late OJB was my producer. Um, so I had a company. I had a proper company and all of that. A uh, record label behind me. And so they didn't, they thought, you know, you can't come out and do rock. And we were talking about 2005, you know. I mean, people were just beginning to even like Nigerian music. And then you want to come and do rock. It's not going to work. So, yeah, so a lot of my kind of, and I write, I write my songs. Yeah. So virtually every song you hear from my first and second album, I wrote them. You know, so um, they were like, no, you have to change some of your lyrics, you have to change this, you have to change that. And so my first album, um, Obi, who I respect so much, said, you know, you have to, which is, he saw this thing a long time ago where you have to bring in the uh, local lingua and then, you know, make it some kind of Afrobeat and stuff. And so that was how I was groomed in that direction. And so Nigelo Agba is a result of thinking in that uh, direction. Um, my second album is more of me. It's more of my type, my type of oh, the way I think and the kind of issues I like to talk about, like Barren Land, which was um, adapted by Amnesty International. So I talk about things that I've seen on the field, you know, all my travels around the world, working for Amnesty International, uh, International for, U, for the UN, um, for uh, um, One.org, you know, my activism side. So I sing mostly. So when I write music and I want to perform music, it's mostly... 80% to 90% my activist self that is performing. Okay, so do you worry, do you, have you, have you heard people tell you things like, why is she going to sing? She can't sing. Does that bother you? Do you sing for money or what? I don't sing for money and that's why I could pause whenever I, when I wanted to pause. And um, when I'm going to go back, I'm going to go back on my own terms anyway. Um, when I started my music career, I told everybody I'm going to be releasing an album maybe five years. People thought that maybe that music career happened because there was that block. No, no one would said, some of you actresses were, were banned. Were banned uh, yeah, I mean, that was a motivation at mm -hmm. the time. Um, my music career was way before that time. Mm -hmm. And I, I think a lot of them now found out because they went on the internet and then they found this or that. Um, that was the only time I found enough time. Because at the, at the beginning of my career, you know, it was really hard to do anything else. It, the, the movie industry is very 
tasking. Mm-hmm. So that was a time I found to immediately do Quickly what I loved something. to do. So they thought that was the reason why that was not. So you told us every five years. Yeah. So I would is there another album. one coming out soon? Um, yeah. Because you've done two. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Yes. But most importantly, I'm not really um, about bringing out an album right now. I want to build my own place where I can be in concert and people who like my music and the kind of um, um, energy that I bring can come and watch me. I find it interesting because at the Motola's uh, birthday, the, the ball, the day before I'd seen you, your voice was... I didn't have from a voice. All the shouting. And then at the ball, you came on so fierce <laughs> and I could hear you sing. I'm like, what happened? So I believe, because you told me that the truth is, um, that is what I like, to sing. Yeah, yeah. So that is an evidence that that is actually what you like. What happened that, that you were able to sing on the 11th? I have no idea. It's still a miracle. I mean, like, my team kept laughing every time, like, how did that even happen? I wasn't even supposed to sing anymore. Um, so when we did all the rehearsals, somewhere along the line, uh, when we were rehearsing, I kept losing my voice. And so my music manager, Ugo Murdy, uh, and um, Ngozi, they, they panicked, you know, and they said, you know, we have to have a stand-in somewhere. And so we had a stand-in, Tony, who was my backup dancer from my album, but she's now a singer. And so she was my stand-in, and we were like, okay, you know, it's just going to be a tribute to you. Just sit down and relax, and then they'll just do your songs, if the worst comes to the worst. And that, that was it. But because they'd done my costumes and everything, that day, um, Ugo was like, just go up and just say thank you. Um, you know, do a line or something. If you can't, no problem. And step away. You know, and let it go. And that was it. And so they did the first song, which was Ba. You know, yes, remember, yes, remember yes, they did that, which was like a tribute or whatever. The second one, I was like, okay, I'll just come on on stage and say thank you. And I walked on stage and I just opened my mouth and that was it. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Mm-hmm. After that, I was like, oh, shoot, I've, I've just finished singing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway, performing and going around. So <laughs> yeah. the experience you wanted people to have with that birthday is the kind of experience you want people, because it was like a surprise. Nobody knew what was going to happen. Right. So it means that you're going to have this center. People will just come and see you sing. Yeah. And it's, it's going to be explosive, trust me. Is it me, like because, the shrine, like what Fela did? Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, pretty much. And maybe people like, I think, Fela, Lagbaja. Lagbaja do mm-hmm. But mine is going to be different because then I am an actor. So I'm going to bring that. So it's going to be stage. It's going to be a lot of acting. It's going to be a lot of music. And it's going to be a lot of, if you remember, there was a lot of fire yes, and a lot of um, theatrics. and yeah. Exactly. So that's yeah. what I want to bring. I think Falls also has done something of that mm-hmm, nature. Mm-hmm. Someone I, I love a lot. And so, so that is the experience. And and for me, it is a journey in music telling a story. So that's why I said when I, when I sing, I sing like an activist. I want to tell stories with my music. Mm-hmm. That uh, sounded like Fela to me, too, somehow. <laughs> it sounded like Fela to me. I mean, but, I mean, that's neither here nor there. You're a singer, you're an actor, your kids have grown, you're still with your husband, and you're living. So 40 didn't scare you. Mm. 